Almost seven long years later, the highly anticipated Gordie Howie International Bridge, a landmark collaboration between the United States and Canada, is finally on the verge of its grand completion. Connecting Detroit, Michigan and Windsor, Ontario, this cable state bridge is set to rearrange cross-border travel and trade, boasting a total length of 2.5 miles. Despite all the hindrances and challenges faced at the initial proposal of commencing this impressive project, the world is getting ready to experience its launch. In this video, we'll be sharing with you the current update on the completion of the Gordie Howe Bridge and how, at the same time, give you a quick glimpse into this massive project. When you think of one of the highly anticipated mega projects around the world, think of Gordie Howe International Bridge. The world has been looking forward to the ultimate completion of this project built 150 feet above the Detroit River, connecting Detroit and Windsor. The journey of its proposal, designing, commencement, and near completion to make this project a realistic one has not been an easy ride. From officially commencing construction with groundbreaking on July 17, 2018, to preparatory work for major construction in 2019, to building foundations for the bridge towers in 2020, the journey was merely just beginning. Moving into March 2022, the legs of the bridge on both sides of the Detroit River were completed. And in the same 2022, over 150 meters of the bridge tower was completed, as well as the road deck. Then, by the time 2023 was wrapping up, two milestones were recorded. Installation of the cables used to hold up the deck of the bridge and completion of the bridge towers in both Canada and the United States for supporting the 853 meters main span. Months after months, no other significant milestone was recorded in the construction of the Gordie Howe Bridge until recently. On June 14, 2024, the project marked a significant stride in construction and the mid-span closure was placed. With that, the two sides of the bridge were permanently connected, making moving to Canada and the United States feasible. While building the mid-span closure, two important factors were put into consideration. The temperature changes, as well as the expansion properties of the steel used. It doesn't even end there. The ports of entry in Windsor, Canada and Detroit, United States are progressing rapidly. Measuring about 53 and 68 hectares in size, respectively, the sites will feature customs and immigration facilities, and even more remarkably, primary inspection lanes for both passenger and commercial vehicles. Having achieved these substantial milestones, one might be quick to conclude that the bridge is ready for opening, but that's sadly not the case yet. However, a target opening date has been fixed in September 2025 with fingers crossed that the remaining parts of building the bridge will be completed before the day. For a cable state international bridge of this magnitude, which spans 853 meters and requires years of meticulous planning and construction, it would be misleading to downplay any aspect of the project as a mere finishing touch, right? Every detail plays a vital role in ensuring the bridge's safety, functionality, and durability for years to come. As the world eagerly looks toward the grand opening of the bridge, all hands are still on deck at the site, meticulously focusing on completing other critical aspects of the project. This includes the completion of the road that connects to Interstate 75 in the US and that of the Ontario Highway 401 in Canada. The installation of electrical and fire suppression systems, completion of the toll booths, advanced drainage networks, protective barriers and clear signages sounds like a lot of work. For the dedicated workforce, records confirm that they have collectively put in more than 12 million hours of work into the project. Assigned to the engineering, technical, or administrative roles, they've made efforts under different weather conditions to drive the project this far. As expected, the progress on the Gordie Howe International Bridge is exciting, but taking a quick glimpse of the proposed completed look of the bridge will get you even more excited. The idea to construct the bridge was conceived in the early 2000s, long before the first steel beam was raised. For decades, leaders in the United States and Canada recognized the need for increased capacity and improved efficiency in cross-border traffic flow. Of course, there was an existing bridge, the Timeless Ambassador Bridge, but it was not meeting the demands of the current commerce and travel, so a better alternative was needed. The Gordie Howe International Bridge is a cable-stayed masterpiece, featuring two towers that pierce the sky at 220 meters tall, supported by a total of 216 stay cables, 108 for each tower. 
Its six-lane deck is divided evenly between two nations, three for the US-bound traffic and another three for the Canada-bound traffic. It also features a multi-use path for bikers and pedestrians, connecting to local streets in both US and Canada. But that's not all. This massive bridge has a main span of 853 meters and a total length of 2.5 kilometers, standing on a strategic 150 meters above the Detroit River to allow for unobstructed ship traffic. The bridge is set to be one of the longest bridges in North America and, more significantly, the 10th longest in the whole world. Wondering why a cable stayed bridge? Cable stays are used to support the structure with enough wires to stretch from Detroit to Alaska and also ensure that no pliers are in the water for safety. Experts believe that the bridge can last up to more than a century in service. The buzz and anticipation surrounding the construction and grand completion of the bridge have got everyone hooked. But beneath the picture perfect of this engineering masterpiece lies a more complex reality that nobody's talking about. When the idea of the bridge was first proposed, Manuel Marone, the multi-billionaire owner of the historic Ambassador Bridge, was against the idea, knowing fully well that it would disrupt the luxury of monopoly his bridge has enjoyed for years. He sued both the governments of the US and Canada, and this lawsuit lingered for six years. Eventually, judgment was given in favor of the government, and the proposal was pushed forward. Unlike most projects of this kind, this bridge is delivered through a public-private partnership. Even though the US and Canada are partners in this project, Canada is spending more. So it didn't come as a surprise when it was agreed that charges would be collected only at the Canadian toll booth. It doesn't even end there. The official handler of the project is none other than a Canadian Federal Crown Corporation known as the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority. One thing is clear, Canada is in charge. Engineering challenges faced during the construction of the Twin Towers were no joke. Welding the six shafts of the towers 755 feet under the ground despite issues with soil condition, wind and forces was no ordinary feat. Also, the unexpected happened and the whole world got shut down. And guess what? Even the project was not exempted. The COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 and 2021 posed temporary work stoppages and supply chain disruptions. The worst part is that these factors had a high potential of scrapping the project. Did you know this? The name of the bridge was not randomly picked. It is named after the Canadian ice hockey player Gordie Howe. This sportsman played for 25 long years, majorly with the Detroit Red Wings, making the name a perfect fit for a bridge connecting Detroit and Windsor. Sadly, he died two years before the construction of the bridge started. If you've ever hoped to drive along an exhibition or art room, then the Gordie Howe International Bridge might just be your next destination after its completion. Probably to make the long drive on the bridge less boring, several pieces of artwork have been included in the project. Works created by local artists are placed on the jump forms within which the Twin Towers were built. Interestingly, when you cross the bridge, you'll not only be changing countries but also time zones. Detroit is in the Eastern Time Zone, while Windsor is often an hour ahead in the Eastern Time Zone when daylight savings time is in effect, while just on a bridge. As construction progresses on the bridge, plans are currently in place to conduct a comprehensive operational test drive on the bridge. Anticipation keeps building for the very day in September 2025 when the first vehicles will cross the border on this engineering masterpiece. Don't you think it's a day to look forward to? Well, let's know your thoughts in the comments section. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like, and share this video.